having like music more related to like the struggle yeah just uh music related to uh you know the struggle for us in the street and the struggle that we're going through you know, as black people in the street uh -huh. you know what i'm saying have a little bit of that on it to raise you know raise the eyebrow same shit people heard before but just to let them hear it again you know what i mean especially uh -huh. to hear it on my shit like because that's what i'm definitely down for to betterment our people Black hoodie, man. Whole interview off that uh, black hoodie, black hoodie TV DVD. You know, uh, want to get out a couple little subjects. That's uh, the, kind of the topic right now, like uh, the Pete Miles shit and all that shit that's going on on the internet. I'm gonna let y'all know that shit right there is on the internet. Like that shit ain't got nothing to do with the street shit. Like that, there ain't no street shit involved with that, man. And at the end of the day, uh, I was fucking with the nigga for a minute. You know what I mean, he made me believe that he was like some type of people's or relation to Sean Miles and shit. So I'm like, all right, this little nigga, you know, he, uh, that's Sean Miles' cousin because they both had the last name and shit. So plus he was from the hood, man. I knew him when I was running around up in the hood, you know, with my niggas. Alley mom niggas running around doing what we do. So I get out there, I start recording with that nigga. Because our studio was down, the big studio out of Wilkinsburg. We got out the uh, bone and uh, all my niggas up the way on Columbo and shit. But uh, I'm out there with the nigga recording and shit. And I'm doing that album, I'm doing my crack album, which is done by the way, you know what I'm saying? I did my crack album by myself out there, and I shot an album with him. I, mean, I forgot the title of it, but we named it and everything, so my computer ended up going down and shit. Like, you know, I was out there working with the nigga for like a good six months, you know what I mean? Not even that, man. My computer goes down on my laptop. So I asked the nigga, like, what's up, man? Like, like, where the motherfucking music at and shit? Like, he like, oh, all right. And mind you, all this shit is on original beat, so. And I got my ass cap. Like, I, block boy, I got my block boy ass cap under ass cap, which is in New York. So I got my papers so I could get paid for my works. See what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, he telling me this shit ain't out. So my man was like, my nigga Lil Mikey, matter of fact, free Lil Mikey too. just caught a gun case. Not too long ago, like a week ago and shit. Free Lil Mikey too. My nigga Lil Mikey hit me and shit. He like, yeah, that nigga got your shit on Reverb Nation and shit. I was like, yeah. So I get my laptop up and running again. So I goes on Reverb Nation. This nigga selling our motherfucking music, bro. You know what I mean? So what type of shit is that? That shit right there lets you know that's some Grammy shit right there. He's selling this shit but telling me it ain't out. And this nigga's getting hits and shit where people's buying and shit. See what I'm saying? All I did was tell him, like, look, fam, if you gonna eat, I wanna eat too. I wanna eat too. If you eat, I wanna eat. I mean, so. You wanna eat? <laughs> so it's like, I got mad. Any nigga gonna get mad. Like, if somebody's eating and somebody ain't, I did as much work as you did. Like, come on, I did twice as work. Twice the work. Nigga, I recorded my album man yours. I ain't have to do that. You know what I mean? Well, did you ever and, look into a way of, like, taking it, like, into a legal matter where you can get your money and no, you can like man, make like, sure that you get something for what was already sold it's like this man like when i actually did it you know the underground shit you know we underground niggas move around here you know we know like all right well 
if I put some shit on a track that you own and, and all the works we own, like when you get paid, come to me like, look, we about to get this money some way and you supposed to come to the table with that. We ain't in the industry, you know what I'm saying? But like at the end of the day, I trusted him with that because he made me trust him just like you do with everybody else. He, he make a nigga trust you and then he'll rape you for all your shit that you work. Like, you know what I'm saying? He'll start studying how you move. See what I'm saying? That's basically what he did, cause all the niggas that I was out there with, who he was fucking with, who was under King Green, nigga, they ain't fucking. I see them in the street, they be like, I was like, still fucking with that nigga. They like, oh, hell no, they got a big ass school about it. So it ain't just me. I felt better. It ain't just me. But as far as the legal works, man, I got legal shit, but I just didn't do no legal shit with him. Cause I'm just figuring I'm like, yeah, you gonna keep a hood with me and you know come to the table when it's time to put the shit out, but he didn't. Yeah. But the only thing the nigga really told me. Cause this is before I started the black hoodie shit. The only real positive shit that nigga ever told me, cause I'm trying to help him with this shit. I'm like, yeah, look, you do this. I've been in the game a little long. And I know a little bit more of this, so I'm trying to drop some jewels. I ain't wanna hear that. He like, he like, nah nigga, if you wanna, if you wanna uh, you know, uh do do some niggas, like basically it was like start your own shit. And that's where I was like, oh yeah, yeah, it's right, cause this ain't my shit. And I did start my own camp, which is black hoodie. We moving, we only two years old. Yeah. Niggas done heard about us already. We moving like the big niggas. We just ain't get to that next level yet. See what I'm saying? You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I put out a motherfucking record. I wasn't even worried about the nigga, man. Like, so I went on and started doing my thing. So he's seeing us bubbling now. So I put out the Nightmare Jam. It's the, it's the shit that's on Facebook that got the Hoodie Man logo with the Freddy Krueger on it, right? Yeah. So I put out a little, he called that the diss record. That's what sparked his diss record. When he came out with that Hoodies and Groupie like type shit. So my diss record was a nightmare song. And then if you listen to the song, I even this block boy, which is me, nigga. I'm block boy, nigga. I just came, on with, came up with the Hoodie shit because I'm creative like that and I could do that. A lot of niggas just running with the name they've been running with. So in the, in the, in the shit I say, what was the diss line? It was like, Live pay per view album, and that stuff. That's the only thing I said. And then in the same line, well, not the same line, a couple lines after that, I even dissed myself. I said, Block Boy who? Block Boy what? He should've put me on that crack. Boy is hoodie, man. So, how could you take that into a motherfucker? You know what I mean? Trying to get at you. What it was is, he said, niggas out there eating. As far as you know, we hit some people fucking her. Shit. Like, what the fuck would you say? So, put out a diss record. In the diss record, do your homework on it. Look at my shit. Well, look maybe at that's shit. what he wants. Right. He can basically say what you want. Like, niggas don't know me. They're going to look at it like, oh, yeah, he like that. He said, I don't take care of my kids and all. He said some foul ass shit. Yeah, I was mad when I first heard it because a lot of niggas was getting at me. But there was niggas more madder than me, fam. See what I'm saying? I'm like, wow, you saying all this untrue shit? I don't take care of my kids. I'm broke. I ain't got no money. All this shit you seen from me, nigga. You've been in my crib, nigga. I blow, I blowed all type of crazy flavors with you and gave it to you for studio time. I ain't never paid for studio time, nigga. Paid for weed. <laughs> smoking my weed, you and your girl just smoking my weed. I used to leave y'all with weed. Like, you know what, here, catch a jitney back to the hood. Like, come on, fam. I, 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 I didn't do nothing but extend my hand. And then all these disc records is coming and shit. Like, I don't give a fuck. I don't care about the disc records, man, because I'm in the hood well, all day. Yeah, I got extended and he bit it. Huh? You know? You bit, you bit it, you know, you extended your hand and you bit it, so... Yeah, I extended my hand and you got it. It's a lesson learned. Yeah, it's definitely a lesson learned, because I've been through it before. You ain't the first nigga I had a problem with in the, in the, in the like, on the, uh, the D side, the lyrical side shit. I done been through Tut. I done been through a couple of niggas. I should have battled other niggas from other hoods, nigga. Like, so I'm, I'm knee deep in battling, like, I battle all day. You see what I'm saying? But... He's trying to eat off niggas like cause he ain't getting no spins and rotation so the only time you gonna get some noise is when you put out a diss record. Well, besides that, I mean, other than like the Pete Mouse situation and the current situation you got, what you plan on doing for like the future like building as far as from now up until the point where you feel that you have what you need and like you become satisfied with your product when you know it's successful. See, look, man, I, I just feel like a nigga ain't never satisfied. Like, I'm, I'm like my own worst critic. That's why I be hesitating to put out shit. But now I'm to the point where I'm getting a little older now, and I got to start dropping that shit. I got a computer full of shit. I can keep smacking y'all niggas in the head for the next three years if I want. Just off the shit I got on my computer right now, nigga. And I ain't even counting the shit that I got up there with my niggas. But what I'm trying to do this summer, we're going to go and drop two albums and a DVD. See what I'm saying? 
And I'm gonna try to start working with niggas like DJ Drama. Got his handle now. You know, get him on the mixtape to make what we doing a little bigger. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for a release party and shit for uh, the albums we got coming out. I'm gonna have to sit it down there. Shout out to the Senate boys. Fuck with them heavy. They got everything I do. Even when I'm out of town, them niggas is up there, man. That's, 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 that's the support of the nigga, man. That's why they call me I'm coming. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, man, I'm gonna put drama on my shit. You know what I'm saying? I got a couple ad and that wanna fuck with our shit. Def Jam already looked at our shit. See what I'm saying? But I ain't the nigga to be running like, yeah, Def Jam. Nah, if it ain't solid, nigga, I ain't running with it. See what I'm saying? But I hollered at Def Jam. I sat down at Universal Records already. So, but my thing is, we gotta make what we doing a little bigger by getting these big name niggas on our shit. You know what I'm saying? Start getting on track with these big name niggas and paying for it. That's all we've been doing, paying for everything. Nigga, this, is, this is nigga, uh, a hood budget. You know what I mean? We shooting all this shit with hood budgets and shit, but we ain't got the big shit, but we, we got nice shit though. You know what I mean? And that's where I'm trying to take our shit, you know, take it to the next level. Just getting some features, like I said, by a nice little DJ. And start hitting these venues and shit heavy and strong, man. Cause I got the team already. My niggas is deep, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, you mentioned like out of town relations. Like as far as you going out of town and stuff like that. Right. Um, when you go out of town, what do you like base your business off of like doing as far as like networking or yeah. just like performing and networking? Yeah, like like the only spot I really been to is Atlanta. I performed down Atlanta. They thought I was on. They thought I was a rapper already. See what I'm saying? I went to New Jersey, same shit. And in New Jersey, nigga, I performed in front of 500 people, 600. I took niggas up there with me. I took Stretch up there. Uh, Stretch rode us up there in the Cadillac truck. I took uh, 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 my nigga Sane with me. I took my nigga, uh, a couple niggas went with me. Met the Senate up there. Nigga, we killed the show. They thought we was on. I, you know what I mean? When I go out of town, I try to network with niggas, see what they into, get some names and numbers. You know what I'm saying? We went up there, burnt the show down, nigga. They wanted us to fucking come back the next night and do a show. Somewhere else. So, you know, all it is is niggas getting our shit into the right hand and it's a rap. Niggas be like, yeah, you old, this and all that. Don't matter, nigga. We got good material. And I always had good material. It's all about if this shit gonna make some money or not. And then you got your shit in a position to make some money. See, I learned that. And yeah, you mentioned like out of town relations. Like as far as you going out of town and stuff like that. Right. Um, when you go out of town, what do you like base your business off of like doing as far as like networking or yeah. just like performing and networking? Yeah, like like the only spot I really been to is Atlanta. I performed down Atlanta. They thought I was on. They thought I was a rapper already. See what I'm saying? I went to New Jersey, same shit. And in New Jersey, nigga, I performed in front of 500 people, 600. I took niggas up there with me. I took Stretch up there. Uh, Stretch rode us up there in the Cadillac truck. I took uh, 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 my nigga Sane with me. I took my nigga, uh, a couple niggas went with me. Met the Senate up there, nigga. We killed the show. They thought we was on. I, you know what I mean? When I go out of town, I try to network with niggas, see what they into, get some names and numbers. You know what I'm saying? We went up there, burnt the show down, nigga. They wanted us to fucking come back the next night and do a show somewhere else. So, you know, all it is is niggas getting our shit into the right hand and it's a rap. Niggas be like, yeah, you old, this and all that. Don't matter, nigga. We got good material. And I always had good material. It's all about if this shit gonna make some money or not. And then you got your shit in a position to make some money. See? I learned that. Yeah, a lot of artists don't realize that nowadays in this age, like, age is like a factor to a certain extent. Right. And then it comes to play like the product. And the uh, product is what you're on, uh, what you're recording. Right. And when they listen to it, if they feel it's marketable, they're yeah, going to give you some money. Even if, yeah. Because if something's worth some money, even if for a short period of time, they're going to milk it for everything that's worth it. Bang. Yes, they and are. And then once I get my foot in the door, I got so many projects, nigga, you're just going to be getting hit in the head with the album after album after like, nah, Master P did it. I'm gonna be dropping shit like that because time's of the essence to me and we got them. The goal is to remain consistent enough to keep on um, building your brand up right. and never let people get tired of the same old thing right. and keep pushing new stuff with the same right. brand that you've been doing from day one. Right. right, just like the shit I was playing for you in or the Born Blacks and all that. I ain't really heard no shit like that. And plus the girly jams we got. We got a lot of girly radio songs and all that, as well as hood songs. I try to teach my niggas to be like how I am and what I learned. You got to be able to touch on a lot of shit. You got to be able to rock with heavy metal bands. You got to be able to be versatile. You got to be able to be on an uh, interview and spit some freestyle when, it, when the time comes. And still get in the motherfucking studio and write. Like, my niggas is on top of that. We write all day. We, I'll show you crazy stacks of papers, nigga. That niggas all rememorize that shit just off of us going, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's, you definitely got to work, man. Shit ain't just like 
easy. Nigga think they hot, make one jam, and got something hood banging and it's this it's official. Nah, fam. I got motherfuckers out of town that Ben was listening to my shit and all that shit. But I'm definitely working to build my brand. You hearing it, you see it, you fucking with it, you know what I'm saying? And uh, the Nets fucking with it, because that's the bad age we in right now, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a uh, digital era. And the record companies, companies were trying to tell me that then, I ain't understand that. See what I'm saying? But I understand now, and nigga, I could get some money right now without even fucking being on it. See what I'm saying? I could go put some shit on the internet. All I want is 10,000. Give me 10,000 times 10.